Coming up on Mountain News at 6. From the Big Sandy to the Cumberland Valley. Challenging 10-hour uh, period. Floodwaters overwhelm eastern Kentucky. Oh, God, I'm stuck. Leading to dramatic rescues. I'm going to save my animals. They're all like that. Police also find a woman dead outside a church. This has just sickened everyone. I mean, it never has anything like this happened. The circumstances surrounding her death a mystery. Localized flooding issues continue into this evening. A wintry mix is possible for tomorrow morning. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Good evening on this very busy Sunday. I'm Steve Hensley. And I'm Neil Middleton. Tonight, our dedicated weather team is tracking the threat for wintry weather and more rain through the week. Going to stay busy already today. Of course, river flooding has closed roads throughout eastern Kentucky, and brave crews have rescued many in need. Now, we have a team of reporters covering some of the hardest hit areas. But first, Chief Meteorologist Andrew Dockery has an update on those river levels. Andrew? Steve, these river levels have been what we continue to watch all day long. Reason being, rain has moved through our region, and we're still looking at a few light showers that could create some localized flooding issues. Let's start with Pinpoint Doppler. The last three hours show you, as we take a look at that, a pretty uh, active pattern with more showers now across Leslie County, pushing into Perry County, even the big sandy communities there in Pike County also looking at some of that rainfall. Now, as far as river forecast, most most of this coming or cresting throughout your Sunday. There are still some areas we need to watch, such as Boonville, the Kentucky River locations. Those aren't until Monday where we hit the crest there. And then the Cumberland River in Williamsburg Monday afternoon. The bigger ones, Pineville, we've crested there on Sunday earlier today. So that is great news. There are still plenty of flood warnings. They go until Sunday night in some locations, even into your Monday, Tuesday. Also, aerial flood warnings out out for Tennessee and Virginia. So Neil and Steve, it's been one of those busy days. We'll continue to track this over the next 24 hours as we will still see some local flooding issues for tonight though with the bigger story, a wintry mix. We'll have details on that coming up here in just a second. All right, not much of a break, Andrew. Thank you. Well, in Harlan County, people really started worrying last night. Yeah, they certainly did. Just before the 11 o'clock news, officials made the decision to close the floodgate in Harlan. Now, Judge Executive Dan Mosley sent us this video shot by a member of the Harlan County Rescue Squad. Now you can see some type of building floating down the river and slamming into a bridge. WYMT's Will Puckett is live in Harlan County. Will, how are things going tonight? Steve and Neil, as you can tell by the umbrella I'm holding, the rain has picked back up here in Harlan County earlier today and into the last night. A lot of community members and people in the city and county government were wondering what the next move was going to be as water rose to levels right up to the front porches. With only 30 minutes of sleep himself, Harlan County Judge Executive Dan Mosley says people are tired. Exhausted at this point, I think. I think people are just, it was a rough night. Uh, uh, you know, people that live on those rivers didn't sleep. Uh, people here in my office didn't sleep. Rain began to fall across the county at 3 a.m. Saturday morning and continued to fall into midday Sunday. It was a very, very, um, it, was a, it was a very, very challenging 10-hour uh, period. Some say they were warned about the flooding potential, but it was even worse than expected. I started noticing on Friday how bad it was starting to look and was going to be, but I just kept hoping and praying that it wouldn't be as bad as they were saying, but it ended up being bad. Front porches were turned into docks. A building was even spotted floating down the river. Many are now cleaning up or wondering what to do next. You know what? I don't know if I'll clean up or not. I think I'll, I might sell my trailer because it floods here a lot. You, I mean, it does. Yeah, you have to replace the wood yeah. and everything. Because if it rots, you're going to yeah. fall through it. And some communities still need to be reached. 
Steve and Neil, as you could hear in the story and as we talk to a couple people from the community right now, some people around here are wondering if they might even stay in their homes. They're thinking about packing up and leaving as water just rose faster and faster, like I said, right up to their front porch. Now, county officials and Judge Executive Dan Mosley say that they're going to try and apply for some state, local, federal, and national assistance, but that can take weeks and even months to figure out if they're even going to get it. For now, live in Harlan County, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. Will, thank you very much. Here in Hazard, flooding closed several roads, including a portion of Main Street. Here is aerial video shot from a drone, and as you can see, the river was dangerously close to many homes and businesses. The North Fork of the Kentucky River crested this afternoon just shy of 24 feet, which is still considered a minor flood. The river in Hazard has not gone above 30 feet since 1984. A heroic rescue played out around 6 this morning in Perry County. People were trapped inside their homes by nearly 5 feet of floodwaters. WIMT's Mary Ann Fletcher talked to the family and captured some dramatic moments. Oh God, I'm stuck. After waking up to a blaring car alarm, and I opened my window and looked out, and I was surrounded in water, so I had to call 911. Nanette Reynolds says she was terrified to find her home flooded. I live out in the RV out in my mom's yard. Unlike most in her situation, Reynolds says her safety was not her main priority. I can swim. I could have swam out there if one had animals. She owns two cats and two dogs. One of the dogs recently gave birth to two pups. She says she loves her four-legged friends like they are family. And I wanted to save my animals. They're all I got. So we got those out first at her request and then, you know, got to, got her as well. Ryan Moore worked to save Reynolds' family. She was just worried about her animals. Moore says he understood why she worried for her pet's safety. I'm an animal lover. I've got animals at home and stuff, so, you know, she was just wanting to make sure that her, her animals were taken care of. Thankfully, as the sunrise hit the water, so did a boat brought by a community member. I'm very thankful. As Reynolds stepped foot on dry land, so did her animals. Moore says he is happy everyone made it to solid ground safe. Unfortunately, we, you know, we couldn't do anything about saving their property, but you know, anytime we can affect a rescue and save life um, of people or animals, you know, that's, that's always a, a good thing. In Perry County, Mary Ann Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Reynolds and her family did not have flood insurance on their homes, but thankfully no injuries were reported. Now, because of the flooding in southeastern Kentucky, state officials opened the Emergency Operations Center in Frankfort. The center acts as a hub of communication between counties dealing with flooding and other issues. They work with government agencies and private businesses to get the help where it is needed. City of Pineville and Bell County officials got very close to closing the floodgate on US-25. They sat together watching to gauge where and when the river would crest. Miles away in Frakes, a massive mudslide closed a major roadway. It could take two weeks or longer to reopen Kentucky 74. We continue our live team coverage in Pineville with WIMT's Justin Case. Justin. Steve and Neil. There are eight sets of floodgates throughout the city of Pineville. And as you can see here behind me, these floodgates on 25 remain open. Now, the mayor of Pineville says that he has crews on standby in case they need to come out here and close the gates because of dangerously high levels of floodwaters. Mayor Scott Maiden says he thought the Cumberland River in Pineville crested a few hours ago, but floodwaters flowing from Harlan are causing levels to rise here in Bell County. We're within two tenths of an inch of closing their uh, fl big floodgate down by the hospital. Uh, like I say, since we feel like we have crested, we're probably not going to, uh, going to do it. We have personnel on standby down there. Maiden says no people have been forced to leave their homes, but low-lying communities such as Walsend could be evacuated if the floodgates are closed. We've never had to close one since we built the flood wall, you know, completed the flood wall in 89, but uh, this is probably going to be one of the closest times that we've had this. Uh, we're thinking this might be the, the largest amount of water we've had since our 1977 flood. One man living in Walsen says he sees similarities between the high water levels now and the devastating flood that happened back in 1977. I feel safe behind the wall. Cause I don't think that water is going to get, get that high because, like I say, in, in the 77 flood, we had a lot more rain. He says he feels more confident now with floodgates protecting the city. 
Connor James joining me now. And Connor, I just got off the phone with Mayor Maiden not too long ago, and he says that he feels confident even with the rain tonight, they will not be forced to close the floodgates. But he says other factors could still pose threats for people in the area. Yeah, roadways are going to be one of those threats. Earlier in between Middlesboro and the Fakes, uh, Frakes community, uh, a landslide took out part of Kentucky 74, closing that road. In Bell County, the constant rain caused many issues. Part of all this water, there ain't, there ain't much you can do to stop it, you know. But one of those landslides, this one in Frakes, divides the community, closing down a vital road. A lot of the problem is on these places, they don't plant trees back. Therefore, you get erosion, you know, instead of having something solid to soak up the water. Bringing down multiple trees, mud and rocks and creating a natural barrier on Kentucky 74. A lot of people over here I work with and, and know, you know, that work in Harrogate and Tazewell, they're going to have to go all the way around. So it's going to probably about 30 minutes. As the constant rainfall continues to flood many parts of Bell County. A lot of debris there in the roads. Now, I did talk with Bell County Dispatch earlier, and they told me it's going to take between two and three weeks to clear all that off uh, Kentucky 78. We're live in Bell County. Connor James and Justin Case, WYMT Mountain News. Well, thanks, Connor and Justin. You know, Steve, this, this flood is bringing back a lot of memories down in that area from 1977. I've spoke to several officials today. They're going to start the damage assessments tomorrow as the water recedes. They're hoping to get state and possibly some federal assistance, but they won't know yeah. until they get a look at the damage. Unfortunately, this hasn't reached nearly the level of the damage of that terrible flood back in 77. Well, technology is helping give us a new look at the flooding from above. We showed you drone video from Hazard earlier. Ryan Hall allowed us to use this drone drone video of high water in Pike County. You can see the area where Pikeville Commons and Walmart is located. This is very similar to a flood there three years ago. The city officials in Pikeville built a floodgate with the river there anticipated to crest at more than 39 feet. Now this is only the second time since the Pikeville cut through project that the city has had to use the floodgate. WYMT's Corey McCauley was there as crews took the precaution. All right. For just the second time in more than 30 years, <laughs> crews were called to build this floodgate in Pikeville. You know, this morning we got that phone call pretty early. They told us that we were anticipating a 38 crest. Well, 38 is that magic number that causes us to put the gate up. Pikeville Fire Department, Pikeville Police, along with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife and UMG took action knowing the river would get higher as the day went on. And obviously today, uh, we're being told it's going to crest at 39.6, but we hit that 38-foot uh, mark on the river level, so it, the decision was made quickly. Uh, we got all the personnel together, got up here, and got it erected. Officials estimate Pike County saw three inches of rain fall in 24 hours. They say there must be a dramatic drop in water level before they can take the gate down. So this thing could be up for a few hours. It might be up for a day or so. It's really going to be up to uh, Mother Nature, so to speak. Is she going to keep raining on us or, or not and how fast those levels drop? Taking action to keep Pikeville safe. In Pike County, Corey McCauley, WYMT Mountain News. Firefighters in Coal Run Village in Pike County responded to several high water calls Sunday. Around 1130, firefighters responded to a car stuck in high water on Stone Coal Road. They say the car was stuck in several feet that covered a major section of the roadway. Officials say no one was hurt, but they want to urge drivers again to turn around and don't drown. Now, all eyes were on the rising Cumberland River Sunday or today in Whitley County. Take a look at this baseball field at the Briar Creek Park in Williamsburg. Mayor Roddy Harris says it's one of the first places to go under during a flood stage. He says Williamsburg sees these types of swells often. Well, during the flooding, several people arriving at church in Knox County found a woman dead. Police call this case right now an active death investigation. Not sure flooding even played a role. They have not ruled out foul play either. WYMT's Krista Frost joins us now live with the developing details on this. Krista? Steve, Neal, church services were obviously let out once church members found this body. Now, just hours ago, we learned that this is the body of a woman, but troopers don't know much more than that. 
Kentucky State Police troopers say a Swan Pond Baptist Church member found the woman. It appears that a member here that goes to church here located a female uh, laying in a drainage ditch, which uh, goes into the Cumberland River. They identified her as 33-year-old Stacy Hobbs of Barberville. Her cause of death still unclear. KSP trooper Shane Jacobs says right now it could be anything from drowning to murder. How long has she been gone? Is this something that may have happened overnight? Was this drug related? Was this, uh, uh, you know, there's several things that could have went wrong here. Churchgoers say whatever the cause. This has just sickened everyone. I mean, it never has anything like this happened. Things like this do not happen in Swan Pond. And once again, Hobbs's body was found in a drainage ditch that leads into the Cumberland River. Her body was sent for an autopsy. Jacob says it could be days to a week before we get any more answers. Live in Knox County, Krista Frost, WYMT Mountain News. Okay, Krista, thanks for that report. Well, widespread flooding across the mountains also impacted Laurel County. Portions of Levi Jackson State Park are underwater. A viewer sent us this video showing the walking paths and parking lot around the duck pond completely submerged by the flood waters. Caitlin Sentner is in Laurel County with more on the conditions in there and that county. Rainfall over the last day or so has caused some issues out on the roads here in Laurel County. You can see behind me there's a large amount of water on this rural Laurel County road, probably about knee deep according to emergency management. Now we've been driving around with emergency management checking out roads. There were a couple of mudslides last night. Crews were able to get cleaned up pretty quickly. EMA is keeping an eye on those spots to make sure nothing more has fallen. More than a handful of roads throughout the county are water covered. Emergency management wants folks to remember swift moving water can be dangerous. Uh, even though the road is on either side, you don't know what lies underneath and uh, swift flowing water, it doesn't take much to move a vehicle and and ultimately it can damage the roadway itself and, and wash a culvert out and you wouldn't know it because you can't see underneath that murky water. Laurel County Emergency Management is heading out tomorrow morning to Harlan County to help out there. For now in Laurel County, Caitlin Setner, WYMT Mountain News. Flooding also impacted many folks in Letcher County. Officials issued a state of emergency today, fearing the cost of all needed repairs. Crews were working late last night and into this morning on clearing several roads. Homeowners say they fear more rain, saying auger hoses behind their homes can only hold so much water before overflowing. Coming up later at 6.30, the shock continues in Paintsville after a quadruple murder-suicide. We'll have new information in the case. From flooding today to a wintry mix tomorrow, we'll break down the active forecast coming up. Severe weather alert day continues and we're looking at some rain chances still moving through some of these locations that do have those flood warnings into play. Perry County picking up on some rain, big sandy communities as well. And those flood warnings could be seen when we fill them in anywhere from Sunday evening, even to Monday and Tuesday for the expiration of these flood warnings. We also have plenty of aerial flood warnings that are located for our Virginia and Tennessee counties. This goes until Sunday at 9 o'clock, so we'll see a lot of this expire for tonight. Flood watches and advisories, you'll see those flood aerial watches or the aerial flood watches. They will go until tomorrow morning across the border in Virginia and our Tennessee counties. They'll cancel later tonight. River forecast, most of us seen the crest already, but we still have a few locations across the Kentucky River and the South Fork Kentucky River there in Boonville. They are still expecting water to rise throughout Tonight. That's going to be big areas we watch for. Also, in some of the locations, Monday afternoon, Williamsburg, Cumberland River. It is good to see that Pineville, the Cumberland River there in Bell County, has crested as of this morning. Temperatures a pretty decent spread. The 30s out in western Kentucky, the 50s for us here. That cold front. It's going to be what sees temperatures dropping down to 31 degrees with a north wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's what's prompted this winter weather advisory for the areas to your northwest. Rowan County, that goes for you until Monday 
and 7 a.m. We'll put this into motion hour by hour. You'll notice rain pushes off for us, but on the back side of this, it's a quick hitting wintry mix. Not expecting much out of this, but temperatures They'll be quite cool for tomorrow. Maybe a few slick spots on the roadways. The best chances for snowfall look to be to the north. Keep that in mind. If you're a snow lover, this isn't going to be that type of event. We get into the 60s, the mid 60s for your Thursday forecast. But notice rain chances. They're at 60 percent on Thursday, a 50 percent chance of some rain on Friday. That could transition to some light snow Friday night. But Steve, when you have flooding like today, mm -hmm. You do not want to see seven days of rain chances, and unfortunately, that's the forecast we face. And another thing maybe tonight is fog. It was kind of eerie seeing the fog on top of the high water today. Dense fog is going to be a huge issue for tomorrow morning. Thanks, Andrew. We'll be right back with more news. Making sense of chaos. Last night, four people were murdered inside their Johnson County homes. The shooter also took his own life. Neighbors told WYMT's Taylor Frost they just cannot believe this happened in their town. It's kind of like a dream. It's kind of, kind of scary, really. A neighbor's worst nightmare. Right. Yeah, I moved from San Diego to get away from stuff like this. John Daniels moved back to the mountains just a few weeks ago. As police swarmed his apartment building on Mill Street Saturday night, he says it hits too close to home. Anything could happen. A stray bullet could went through the walls and hit us. But the deadly rampage began in the afternoon. Police say Joseph Nickel began killing people at his parents' home on McKenzie Branch Road. We, we had no really no idea what was going on until we entered the house. His parents, Wayne and Arlene Nickel, shot to death as they sat down to eat an afternoon meal. Such a horrific scene, both one and two. A few hours later, Joseph Nichols' girlfriend, Lindsay Van Hoos, and her mom, Patricia, were both found murdered in their apartment on Mill Street. Joseph Nickel then shot himself, but he did leave behind a suicide note. He tried to explain his reasoning for committing this horrific crime. As the police work to close the investigation, they say the community is safe. Cops, they do their job good, man, especially here in city limits. They're on it. For Daniels, he believes his close-knit community will move forward. Time heals. Time heals. In Johnson County, Taylor Frost, WYMT Mountain News. Now, police have not released what was in that suicide note or a motive. Kentucky State Police, the Johnson County Sheriff's Office, and Paintsville Police are all working together on the investigation. We'll be right back.